oh, oh, I'm just mad about YouTube. And YouTube is mad about me. They call me Full Tilt On. Quite rightly. They call me Full Tilt On. Quite rightly. Let's see if I can show you how this is going to work. Now, this is uh, a hack job. Um, again, if we think it out and 3D print it so that everything, the clearances and everything are right, it'll work a lot better. Um, so we hooked up a little battery and switch. This is overkill. This motor is way too powerful for what we need to do to turn these things slower and I'm not going to gear it down. Um, so as this one turns on the motor, it's just loosely on the shaft. Uh, hopefully it won't bind, but it doesn't really have anything to keep it true. Um, then the one on the bottom will be turned from the bottom of the spindle of the motor, so it'll turn in the opposite direction. So when this is all put together properly, and if I can hold everything together, you want to design things to be forgiving. That's the word. You want to design things to be forgiving of inaccuracies. It's a good thing to do. Um, this is extremely inaccurate, and yet it potentially actually works. Okay, I'm going to test the back gear just to make sure it doesn't jam anywhere. Ah, my button needs to be put somewhere. Looks like it spins pretty good, a little too fast, but... Now we'll put the front gear on here. And hopefully it will stay in line, and unfortunately this part here is still the wrong size. Um, maybe I can do something about that. That's just going to jam on me because of that. There we go. Well, now they're turning the same direction. That's not what I want. No, they're not. They're turning opposite. I just couldn't tell. They're going so fast. There we go. We gotta slow these babies down. They're going too fast. Okay. Well, it'll work. Let's put it together. I have a love-hate relationship with hot glue. Um, I used hot glue around here to close up the tolerance a little bit. And um, I overdid it. So in order for me to get it smaller and round, I just turn the motor on and use a file. Just enough to take it down a little bit so it doesn't jam on me. I don't want to take it all off. That should just about do it. And a piece of plastic with an X cut in it should be all I should need to hold that in place, like a washer. There we go, hands-free operation. And I did check, these batteries are dead. So, uh, with dead batteries, it works pretty good. Um, we only really need one battery. This two double A's is way overkill. But, uh... Put in where you need it. Okay, I forgot to put my collar back on. I had to take the gears off. So I'm going to do a quick assembly here. Um, hopefully it'll be quick. So I'm going to... I made a slot in here. i got to make this tab a little sturdier so that I can get that in there. Well, I'm probably going to have to break down and 3D print this part here because I cannot get it perfectly round or even close to round <laughs> with the O-ring. And if I just measure this and 3D print it a little bit... Um, just got to design how big I want that so that when it slides on the shaft here, it will just hit that with enough and it won't jam because occasionally it jams. Um, we don't want any jams because that's no good. Goes over top, wiggles on, little gear goes on this side. The retainer goes on here, like so, and then I'm trying to get this to be on here, which I'm going to glue. Uh, 
Now I could probably get these a little closer together um, if I planned for this in the first place and make it all look a little nicer. Um, that'll be for the next version. Prototype number two. Go ahead and turn the machine on, Boris. Okay, do a dab. And another dab. Okay, the dab didn't work very well because uh, Boris, his feet were not anchored very well and he kept moving on me, so I gotta learn step motion better. I'm not very good at that. Anyway, um, I've done a couple improvements to the gears on here. Um, I reprinted it because the one I had was plain dang horrible. Plus they weren't very close together, so I wanted to get them closer together to make it more realistic. Um, and I redid the uh, collar in the texture that looked a little bit closer to what it's supposed to look like. I think I have it turned around a little bit, but overall it's roughly right. Um, the last time I ran ink through here, I had uh, pulled the tube back in. I need to almost anchor this tube in here so it doesn't happen again. But when I put the, the uh, nozzle back on here, I can do that for you guys. And it looks like that. And I put the battery pack inside. Um, it's still overkill. It's two double A's. I don't need that, but I can't find a single triple A or whatever. I'd have to make my own battery compartment, which I don't want to do right now. And I put the button in here like that. So when you turn it on, you just push your button and make sure the nozzle doesn't get stuck. And there you go. It's a little slower um, like I wanted it. It still could be a little slower yet. Um, I'd have to get this a little more accurate and put less of a battery in there so I don't have nearly as much voltage going through and then it would turn slower. But that's it for now. Um, make this hatch go back down here and uh, we'll throw some more ink through it and play with our ink bindi here after a while. Um, my magnet moved inside of him and he's not doing exactly what I wanted him to do. Uh, I have two magnets in here and they were in the right position but now they're not so the spikes are interesting. They don't, they're not as good as I wanted but actually the ferrofluid seeps through his mouth, which is really freaky looking. Maybe I'll get around to showing you that um, when I have my hands free and uh, finish with this video, which has been sitting around for a while and never getting done.